<laughs> Hi, this is Matt York, and we are on the Night Train Sessions. Thank you so much for coming in, guys. All right, some more serious questions for you now. Um, I guess the first thing I'd like to know about you guys is, Matt, you've been playing music since you were a kid, right? Correct. And then you kind of took a break from it? Yeah, and I, so for a long time I played in a band, White Iris, with this guy right here. Uh, we were a three-piece band, and then, yeah. No, uh, when was this? This When was this? Yeah, like... Um, late, late mid-90s to early 2000s. Okay. And then, yeah, I took about 12, 14 years off, got married, kind of grew up a little bit, had kids, did all that stuff. And then um, my dad turned 70 years old, and I decided to go in the studio and record a couple of songs for him, and all of a sudden I made a whole album, and... Here I am, like growing a beard. I'm like, I'm right back in it again, you know. So, nice. yeah. So, so we, uh, yeah. But we had gone a long time without doing anything. So, it's fun now, to be back. And so, how did you form up with the rest of the band with you know Kevin, Tim? Yeah. So uh, Tim and Jeff have been friends for a long time. Kev is a friend that we've known. Both of us have known for years. Has been a part of the music scene in Cambridge for forever. And um, so I just reached out to Jeff and. Um, you know, he was up for doing it, and I do, I do the majority of shows that I do, I play by myself, just solo acoustic type, you know, songwriter nights. But uh, but then we like to make a lot of noise sometimes, so uh, these guys have been awesome about being a part of it. Nice. Now tell me about. So the first song you did is "Big Fan of Why." Correct. Uh, so tell me a bit about that song. How, how so it came about. oh man, I wish I had. So I did an interview on the radio a while ago, and I didn't have an explanation of what the song was. So a coworker of mine sent me an explanation of what the song should be. <laughs> I, so uh, this is a true story. So on Friday, I just did an interview with a German magazine, and I literally took his quote and I just cut and pasted it in. But uh, <laughs> because I have no, so there is no story to the song whatsoever. But what he likes to say that it's about is that somebody who has lived a life of heartache and he never thought of. He thinks about the who, the what, the where, and the when, but he never thinks about the why. Wow, now can you do that in German? <laughs> D? <laughs> no. Dare? No. I took two years of German, but... Now your second song, I'm All Done. Yeah. What's that about? I'm not sure what that's about. That's a fairly new song, and uh, I, uh, I'd read a, a story about Jerry Jones, the owner of the Dallas Cowboys, and there was a line about how good women wouldn't leave him alone because of the fact that he just had a lot of money and he just kind of had a swagger to him. So I loved that line, of, and so I completely stole that line. I did. <laughs> and, uh, and then the rest of it's just kind of about a guy that, you know, just walks through life and good women chase him and make his life more complicated. Nice. Now, how often do you guys gig? I'm playing almost every week doing something. Um, the, the band shows are more sporadic, uh, probably once a month, something like that. And so uh, we're trying to build on that. Um, but you know, I really, I hadn't been doing anything up until about seven months ago. So mm -hmm. you know, the album just came out really at the end of January, beginning of February. And uh, we've had a lot of good success so far. So we're kind of trying to build on that. But. We've been doing this a long time. It's a, it's it's not like we're young fellows like these guys over here, where everybody wants you know all our friends want to go out and drink till two in the morning. Mm -hmm. You know, so it's uh, we got to be a little selective when we play out and stuff. So. Yeah. So what, what's the difference between when you guys gigged younger to now? Like, are there are there advantages that you have now that you didn't have then, or are there disadvantages? I don't like? drink. <laughs> <laughs> so like I drank <laughs> before we played here tonight. I drank a coffee. You know. <laughs> That's probably the difference. The biggest Before we'd be, I'd be, we'd be in the parking lot, you know, pounding beers. Right. But it, but in all seriousness, it's it's been a really funny thing to come back to because we had a pretty good run back in the late '90s when really when email was just coming out mm -hmm. and you know the internet was really just kind of you know st still in the dial-up world. So. Um, to come back, I always say that I feel like um, Austin Powers when he comes back and he's just like, what the hell's going on? You know? <laughs> so, so it's, you know, and, and so many of the clubs that we played a, a ton back in the day are gone. Mm -hmm. And so it's a whole different world. Um, but there's still a whole lot of good music out there. And um, there's a lot of good people like you guys doing what you're doing that, that you know, it's been fun to kind of see that that's still there. You know, so. Now, how do you get fans to shows? Like, has that changed from when you used to do it? 
I don't know if it, we were 24, 25 years old when we were doing this, mm -hmm. so our, our friends didn't necessarily even like our band. They just liked to come out because they knew it was going to be a crazy night. Mm -hmm. And, mm -hmm. uh, you know, we're now, I mean, I got two kids that are under the age of 10, so I know that if I'm out till 2 in the morning, I'm still going to be <laughs> up at 6, right? So right. Um, so it's kind of being selective. Um, we've played a few shows at, uh, at Atwood's Tavern in Cambridge, which is great because they do these, like, afternoon shows from 4 to 6, and you can bring your kids and stuff like that. They have food and stuff there. So those have been really fun. And a lot of the bands that we used to play at TT's with for years back in the days are much older like we are and have kids. And, you know, it, it's there's kind of a new little home for, for those of us that have been doing this a long time. So it's kind of neat. What made you guys want to be performers so much so that you kind of took a break from it but then came back to it? Um, I mean, for me personally, with the album, I mean, I, like I said, I mean, I, I I literally went years where I didn't pick up a guitar. I mean, I did nothing, and um, I just. But I mean, it had been what I did from about the age of fourteen to thirty, mm -hmm. and um, mm -hmm. so yeah. I mean, some of it I, I really missed. Some of it I remembered. Oh yeah, that was a pain. Oh, it's a pain to lug your amp up the stairs, and there's mm -hmm. nobody there at the club when you go to play. <laughs> you know, some of those things. But um, but a lot of it has been really fun. Things like this is fun, just being, you know, being able to yell and scream as loud as you want for, you know, 10 minutes and uh, <laughs> get it all recorded. It's kind of neat, you know. How's your songwriting changed from when you were younger, or has it? Um, I think we were more punk influenced when we were younger. Um, I wrote the songs back then, but we were more punk based, and I think I've kind of just mellowed a little bit uh, on some level, but you know, I mean, there's still kind of that punk at the core. Thing. I mean, I think we were fairly noisy just then mm -hmm. doing what we were doing, so um, I don't think it's changed all that much. I swear less. <laughs> what artists inspire you? Um, Who influenced you? For me personally, uh, Lou Reed, um, Bruce Springsteen, um, Steve Earle, um, three of my Wilco, those are probably some of my Pixies. favorites. Pixies. Pretty much everybody. I mean, it depends on you know what day of the week it is and what's going on. I'll listen to pretty much anything. So I love hip hop. Probably I listen to hip hop more than anything. I love Kendrick Lamar. I love a lot of that stuff, and I always have. So it's funny. Like I never, you never know. Like, but I mean, he doesn't influence my writing. I guess, right, right. but I just love to listen to him. <laughs> so. That's cool. That's cool. You guys have been around for a while in the industry. Like, what kind of things have you learned about the music industry that you could share with some up-and-coming artists that are coming up? You have to work. I think, I mean, some of the best bands, I know I can speak for Jeff, but some of the best acts that we've seen over the years mm -hmm. were people that we saw that were awesome and then we never heard from them again because they just didn't do anything about mm -hmm. it. And so mm -hmm. there's this work that goes into it that if that's not there, nobody cares. Nobody's going to come looking for you if you stop doing it. And I guess lastly, how do you judge whether a gig is a success for you? I mean, I know there's probably some, some gigs where like you don't have much turnout or whatever. Like, what what makes a gig successful? It's killing it. Yeah, yeah just feeling like just you had it. it. Yeah, you walk right. off and you're like, yeah. <laughs> yeah playing, like last time we walked off, I was like, ooh. ooh playing yeah. playing well and and, and, uh, nail it. and some some type of appreciation. You know, there's nothing worse. I've and I've done it. You you know you you feel like you played the best song or you know you you did the best uh, you could for a whole gig and then you know you don't there's tumbleweeds out there you know people don't react mm -hmm. boo or cheer what some kind of reaction yeah I've noticed that a lot that's, that's the that's the yeah. worst for me um, it it does seem like a lot of audiences don't know that they're audiences yeah like, right you know uh, and it, it, have you noticed that at all I mean so I think it's the lack of live music that is up here now yeah I don't know. Yeah, like why you go to that? Nashville or Memphis, and that's the entertainment at the bar. Now it's like the entertainment's your phone, yeah, or uh, whatever the Red Sox game, right? I th it's like, yeah, I mean, I, it's funny coming back because I like, I mean, name a rock star under the age of thirty, right? There, there right. are none. Right. So I think that that's part of the issue is that you know you see a lot, you know. Kids that are in their 20s don't necessarily want to come out and see guys that are in their 30s or 40s playing EDM. And uh, yeah, I mean, music just hip hop is far more prevalent than it was when we were younger. And uh, so I think that's you know the way that's not as much of a live music. Um, so, but I don't know. I mean, at the same time, like you you find people that you're like, oh yeah, we speak the exact same language, and you know, I love what you're doing, and vice versa. And uh, I love that. I mean, that part of it I always loved when we were younger, and it's fun to come back and see that that 
still exists. That like as soon as you see someone and within five minutes, like because I didn't go to shows for a long time too when I was stopped doing this. So to go back and see people and be like, oh yeah, you're really really good, and this is why I love doing this. Mm -hmm. It's neat to see that that's still there. So. Well, great. Thank you so much for coming into the studio. Um, I want you to plug your, your CD for me a little bit more. Tell people how they can get that cool CD, where, where right. it's at. I am Matt York. This album is called Boston, Texas. This artwork is really cool. There's two sides to it. You can buy it on iTunes. I don't get much money if you buy it from iTunes. You can buy it from Bandcamp. I get more money. Go to a show and buy you it at a show. Go to a show and I'll probably just give it to you. Uh, <laughs> you so, that? Or you can go to mattyorkmusic.com. Boom. Uh, or Matt York Boston on the old Twitter, and you can connect and you can find it and you can buy it and you know, put my kids through college. Nice. Do it. <laughs> Thank you guys. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, hello. Didn't quite see you come in. Thanks for watching this video of Night Train Sessions. We really appreciate it. If you liked it, make sure to hit the like button. If you haven't subscribed already, be sure to do that because we're going to be giving lots of really cool prizes away and all you have to do is hit subscribe. If you've already done that, thank you. Our deepest appreciation for you. Cheers. Tasty.